It's actually punctually uh, 2 p.m. Um, I'll present myself, Jerzy Zewitski. I'm from Digital Home Systems, the company I am uh, representing is uh, organizing a series of uh, webinars on smart home technologies, primarily KNX with uh, Comfort Click as a visualization uh, tool, working with KNX and Z-Wave. Um, we run these webinars every Wednesday uh, for the last uh, few weeks, and we have quite a busy schedule for the next couple of uh, Wednesdays. Continuing with uh, Ian Harding's presentations on KNX programming with ETS next week and KNX and DALI lighting control following week. Mm, stay tuned with us. We'll update you more in a week uh, time. There will be more webinars on Wednesday, so so stay with us. It will be more exciting topics covering Comfort Click and also uh, KNX and other um, wireless technologies around products from NICE Italy, including Home Center 3. Today's topic is KNX topology and networks. Um, it will be provided in a second by Ian Harding, who is an uh, ABB KNX certified trainer. Having said this, um, I would like to welcome Ian Harding from ABB. Ian, I'm handing over to you. Okay, guys, um, thanks for your time again. Thanks for the introduction, Jersey. Today, I'm going to give you a run through um, KNX networks and KNX topologies, how they all go together and how we use these to set up our successful KNX topologies in large buildings. Without much ado, I shall move to the first slide. On the first slide, I show the topology of a KNX line or a KNX segment. The components of a KNX line are we have our power supply with a built in choke. This gives us our 29 volts, 30 volt DC um, KNX power supply to the bus. And then all of our devices are just connected onto that bus um, any old way we want. We have star points, we have T points, we have, it doesn't matter how we connect to a KNX line, it's a simple two wire system. Um, on the power supply, you will have a red and a black connection. You connect your red and black wire from your KNX cable on here, and it just drops to all the devices then connected to the line. And it gives them all enough power then to operate and do whatever they have to do on the line. Um, in this sort of section, the actual number of devices depends on um, what size power supply we have. Now, a KNX power supply comes in three sizes. We have 160 milliamps, we have 320 milliamps, and we have 640 milliamps. Now, each device is allowed to pull 10 milliamps off the bus. Um, so you can see then that if we have a 160 milliamp uh, power supply, we can connect 16 devices. If we have a 320 milliamp power supply, we can connect 32 devices. And if we have a 640 milliamp power supply, we can connect 64 devices to the line. So this is pretty standard, and this is pretty much how all KNX lines work. If we have the devices just thrown randomly onto a line like this, every device will have an individual device address on that line. You can see we have device 1.1.1, 1 1.1.2, 1 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, all the, just the different various individual device addresses. When we first program a KNX device, this is the first thing we must do with the KNX device is give it an individual address. And no two devices on the network can have the same address. Important thing to remember about the device, the three digits do actually stand for something. The first digit is the area that we're connected to. The second digit is the line that we're connected to. And the third digit is the device on that line. So each individual device in a KNX network has its own individual address and can be easily identified with that address. As we go through this presentation, you'll learn more about areas, lines, and devices, but just bear that in mind. Um, it's the first thing you do is program the device address to the device, and after that, you never have to program it again. But when you're doing a download, it's important to know that you're downloading to the right device address. 
of course, if we have a, a line coupler attached into our line, things get more complicated. But if we don't have a line coupler, and I'll explain later what line couplers are, what they do through our project, the device names don't really matter. If we're just using a single line with up to 64 devices, we can give the device addresses any old device we want to. And the max number we can have is 15.15.255. And this address is actually the parked address of an unloaded KNX device. An unloaded KNX device, be it one that comes straight from the manufacturer, such as ABB, or whether it's one that you yourself have unloaded on your network, will default to a 15.15.255 address. Um, our cable lengths, is, it's very important to keep an eye on our cable lengths in our uh, line segments. The maximum length of a cable in a line segment is 1,000 meters. It's important to remember 1,000 meters. If we go beyond 1,000 meters, we'll have problems with communications and voltage drop, but the maximum length is 1,000 meters. Um, from the power supply to the furthest device on the line, it should be 350 meters. Yeah, and between the two furthest devices, if we go in two different directions, the maximum distance between devices is 700 meters. And this is all to do with how, K, how KNX functions and how KNX communicates on the bus line. But they're important figures to remember. And very often when I see problems in KNX networks, it's down to lines uh, being too long. Um, it's, it's not that the the project won't work is that you'll get funny things happening from time to time and it's just one of those issues that is very important and often overlooked i've seen many projects where the lines are too long and um, funny things start happening and it's a sure sign that um somebody's done something wrong in laying out the network configuration so it's very important to get this correct and it's very important when starting a project to make sure that the electricians pulling the cables in understand this as well and um, very often they don't and they will just pull line after line after line and the, the distance goes out the window but just be careful with this it's something that will save you a lot of time as you go further and further into projects and deeper and deeper into them here's the topology of a knx area now a knx area is just another bunch of lines in effect and um, what we have in an area is we have a main line now the main line in an area connects all the lines in the area you can see we have line one on the left side here and from this line all the telegrams and information will feed onto the main line and from there we can feed down to the other lines the maximum number of lines we will have in an area is 15. it's always 15 so the maximum number of lines you have in a line is 15. we can have 64 devices per line so 15 times 64 and we can have up to 49 devices connected to the main line as well so that's important to remember. We have a power supply on the main line and it can supply the KNX devices connected to the main line. So this is very handy. In this topology, we can get up to a thousand bus devices connected. Now remember, each bus device is a physical de device. It may be a switch, it may be a 24 channel relay, it could be a two channel dally gateway, it could be a dimmer or a blind actuator, but each device um, no matter how many channels it has, just counts as one uh, device on the network. And again, we have all the devices on this network will have their individual addresses. So there is sort of a trick to this. And we are now in area one. So of course the first digit being our area digit is always going to be one. The second digit is the line and the third digit is the device on the line. So looking at line number one, you can see that we have line coupler 1.1.0. The line coupler on a line will always have address zero. Every other device after that is from one to 64. No matter what we want, this is where it will be. And you can see for all the different lines, then we follow the same thing, area.line.device, area.line.device. The thing to remember is that for area, any device on the main line in the area, the actual line number is zero, yeah? So any device on that main line will be 1.0.1234, whatever the device number may be on the line. It's through this that we build up our structure and our network architecture for our project. And you can see the topology lays itself out very friendly to buildings. 
very often we'll see a main line in a building goes up the backbone of the building and each line then could possibly be um, a floor in the building it just every building is different and every structure is different but this is a useful line and it's often laid out like this and um, with a line coupler as well and um, in smaller projects what i'll often see is two lines in in the project we'll have a main line and we'll have maybe line one such that any device will be either um on the main line with a device address 1.0.5 and 7 in this example or on the line itself, it will be 1.1, 1 .1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, etc. Important to remember is that we need a power supply either side of the line coupler. Sometimes people forget this, but it's very important to remember. And again, each of these lines is up to a thousand meters long. From the line coupler to the power supply on line one and out to all the devices, you have a thousand meters. On the main line, you have another thousand meters. So. It's important to remember you can build quite large and quite big networks with KNX. Um, some, another thing to remember is that when we have a line coupler, it's important that the devices have the correct um, device number on them. I've seen frequently projects where, as in this example, we have a device placed on the wrong line. If you look in the bottom middle there, we have a device 4.1.2 sitting on line 1.1.0. This will cause problems to your network and will cause all sorts of issues, which you will have fun with as you try and program the devices later. Um, pretty often, we just have two lines set up with a main line and a secondary line. Simple to use, easy to use. Many, many smaller projects use this topology. All you need to remember is you need one line coupler, two power supplies, and then your devices just sit on the appropriate line, however you number them. If we have two secondary lines, we don't have to have any devices on the, on the main line. Um, very often people will do this rather than put devices onto the main line itself. It just gives people more options and more flexibility. Uh, for example, if we were doing a house this way, we could have line one is the ground floor and line two is the first floor. It's a useful and it's a very frequently used version. If we want to connect several areas together, we can now connect them using a backbone line via a backbone coupler. You can see in this diagram, we have our original area one here as we first started with. We have up to 15 lines on this area. So we've over a thousand devices on the main, on area one. These devices are now linked via a backbone coupler and the backbone coupler onto the backbone line then links all the areas. And again, we're up to a maximum of 15 areas. So we have 15 lines by 15 areas by 64 devices per line. And this will give us a, up to um, 15,000 bus devices. So we can build quite a large, quite an extensive network just using this topology. Um, the line coupler and the backbone coupler are the same device. Um, the only difference between them is their address. And we'll see this in a minute. We also have the possibility, of course, to put devices onto the main line and onto the backbone line. Yeah, don't forget this. This is important as well. We can add these devices in wherever we need to add them. And of course, we can go on to line five, to line 14, to line 15. It doesn't matter what lines we have. We can, it's the same topology for every network. Every KNX network will look like this at some stage or the other. And again, here's just another version of it. And um, we've just put it all onto one page just for simplicity's sake. You can see at the top, we have the backbone line. The backbone line being the line that connects all different areas. We have our backbone coupler and our backbone coupler again it's area line device area one line zero device zero we come down to line one then and the line coupler for that line is area one line one device zero and all devices on that line then are one to 64. we can have very often I've seen people, they will start line, or devices 1 to 10. They might leave a gap and go 15 to 20. They might need another gap and go whatever it is, especially where you're doing shop fit-outs and things like that where you're running around a building. 
Um, important to remember is, as I've said before, area goes to 15, line goes to 15, and bus device can go up to 255. Yeah, it's 4 bit, 4 bit, 8 bit signal. So, in total, it's a 16 bit address. You never need to worry about this, it just works. Um, important to remember as well is, I've said before, a device, if a device has a proper uh, device address, it must rest on that line behind its line coupler. Example here, device 141 sits behind line coupler 140. Device 11564 sits behind uh, line coupler 1150. And so on and so on through the whole network. It's important that all the devices sit in the right place. And again, we've just done the same thing for area number seven. We have backbone coupler number seven on top with a device address of 700. We have the first line on here is 7.1.0. We have um, line four is 7.4.0 all the way to line 15. And again, you see the device addresses for each device onto this network. Um, the topology, the line coupler performs a very important device in a, in a KNX network. And um, it has two really important functions. The first function it has is to provide electrical isolation between the main line in an area and the individual line. So what happens then is if you have a short circuit on any line, it stops at the line coupler. It doesn't pull the whole network down. So any problems in a KNX network, it'll only be that line that goes down when we have an electrical fault or a short circuit or a cable cut or any of those sort of problems. It also has a filter table, and this is another very important function. The function of a filter table is to filter the, tele the communication traffic throughout the network. When we're sending telegrams on the network, um, the the line couplers will ensure that the traffic is only routed and the areas where it should be. The telegrams do not need to be broadcast to everybody. They only need to go to certain places. And the filter table in the line coupler plays an important function in minimizing traffic throughout the network. Um, <clears throat> you can see as well, if we want to extend the line, I never recommend to do this, but you can do it if needs be. If we want to extend the line, um, for example, here we have line one, and we've reached our limit of 64 devices. We're going, heck, what do we do next? We can extend the line with a line repeater, yeah? So we can add another 64 devices onto the network if we want. And that then gives us 128 device, devices on the line. We can put another repeater, gives us up to 192 devices. And we can add a third repeater to give us up to 255 devices. Now you can see that the line repeaters must be connected in parallel. You cannot connect them in series to give you extra length. Um, you'll also note that they have an address 1.1.62, 3 and 4 in this example. They are the same device as a line coupler. However, it's just that the, the device address is non-zero. Okay, So it becomes a repeater if the device is a non-zero. Also, because it's a line coupler, or it's the same device as a line coupler, we need a power supply each side of it because the power supply is interrupted by the um, by the device itself. Yeah, remember it gives us short circuit protection, so we always need a power supply each side of a line coupler. Um, and it's the same for all of these devices; they are the exact same device as a line coupler. It's just a different device, and they're connected in series, or sorry, in parallel. Another important thing to remember is that where a line coupler, when it's set up and used as a line coupler, gives us two functions. We have electrical isolation and we have a filter table. When we use a line repeater in a KNX network, it does not have a line, uh, it doesn't have a telegram filter capacity. It just repeats all telegrams through the whole network. So there can be issues with telegram traffic in a network like this. You can do it, you can manage it, but you've got to think about it before you do this. So if we add three line repeaters per line, we can now grow our network to over 57,000 devices. And you know, this is really huge projects. Um, I have seen once or twice large, large projects get up to this size. Um, but nowadays we don't have any problems with them. The EEPROMs can manage this. I mean, there's, there's never really any problems with this anymore. Um, also to remember is that your line repeater can have any address, yeah? 
it doesn't matter it's an individual address on that line it doesn't matter if it's 111 112 113 but just remember that on that line the address will be unique nobody else can have that address and again we just show it for line five or, yeah that's not correct <laughs> but anyway we show for area five line seven oh sorry it is correct um it's just another example um as i said before we have area line bus device each device and we, we say this all the time in training we always say keep say this a hundred times and you hope people remember it um it's a four bit four bit and a eight bit number so it gives us a maximum of 15 15 255 you can see for an area coupler the device address is going to be one zero zero for a line coupler it's going to be area one line one device zero so it'll be one one zero it'll be one two zero one three zero etc and for a line repeater it's any non-zero address that's freely available just remember unique addresses are what you need typically when we have several lines in a project here will be the the switchboard gear will be laid out something like this and um, you'll have a main line line one line two etc etc that's just a typical network layout and typically what you'll see in switchboards throughout the place um, <clears throat> rather than use a line coupler in our project we can use um and the abb ip routers as line couplers so in this case you see we have an ip router on the top used as an area coupler so he's a 1.0.0 or in this case he's used as a line coupler so we're going direct from the line on knx and bring out ethernet traffic in knx and this and the right hand i'd say the left hand side we've put the whole area in behind the backbone coupler on the right hand side we've just made it into a line coupler and um, external interfaces should always be connected to the highest line we have in our network for example if i have a visualization system sitting on my knx network i want to make sure that it can look down into the whole network and see all devices and see all telegrams that it needs to see so I should always sit it on the highest line of my network. If I have multiple areas, it's going to be the backbone line. If I just have one area, it's going to sit on the main line. And this is very important. It helps with traffic and helps with um, telegram traffic on the network. And it's important to remember. Um, we should always use good electrical practice. We should always think of things like, you know, should we leave spares? How many spares should we leave? i'd always recommend leaving 15 20 percent spares and um, it's it's easy then if we've got multiple lines we can add devices where and when we need them and um, central devices as they say should always be installed in the main lines of the backbone lines and typically if we have the devices on multiple lines and um, devices connecting room groups should always be on the same line we shouldn't have you know i don't know if you two switches in one room that one's on one line and one's on another I have seen projects like this and it does cause confusion causes chaos it's harder for the electricians to wire it's harder for us to program we then have to go in and file multiple problems chase out the cabling find out what's gone wrong try and make sure that in a room we stick everything on the one line and possibly as well um, on one floor or um, one, it depends on one part of a building we should always try and just use one area I mean it's 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 not always possible but sometimes we just have to map it and be careful with it and it's something just to remember anything that makes sense is something that we should do here's an example of a medium-sized project and um, we have just a building that i don't know somebody designed this building for us and um, we have area one and area two area one is the west wing area two is the east wing you can see we have multi, we have a line per floor on the west wing we have line 1.1 line 1.2 point 0.3 point 0.4 point 0.5 and it's the same on the east wing we have line 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.4 2.5 2 these link back then to a main line for each area and of course the two main lines then are linked by backbone couplers or the backbone line between the devices makes sense and it's easy to see the structure of what we should do with the bit sorry with the building 
in our in our sheets as we know and as we've seen plenty of times here's a visualization of what we have we have uh, the west wing is backbone coupler one with area one and all the devices on it and the other east wing then is area two with all the devices on that the backbone coupler typically here's another way of sketching it out i mean this is the beauty of knx there's multiple ways to sketch things out everybody comes up with a favorite and um, i've often said to people this is an easy structure to draw straight into an excel sheet um, we can use create an excel sheet and draw this out in five minutes you know it's very easy and all buildings are the same we never come up with anything that much different but again you can see we've lines one one to one five on the left hand side uh representing the west wing and we've lines two one to two five on the other side representing the east wing we have the main line in the area going up the building on each side and we have a backbone coupler linking the two backbones with a backbone line Um, if we need to, we can add additional lines. In this case, we if, I don't know if we have if too many devices per floor, we can add another line on the floor if we need to be. You know? In this section now, we now have lines 1, 1, and 1, 2 on the left-hand side on the floor. We've 1, 3, and 1, 4 on the next floor. 1, 5, 1, 6 on the next floor. 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, and 1, 10. Again, every building is different. Every structure is different. Whatever makes sense is usually a good thing to use. Another way to do this is to put line repeaters on the line instead. Maybe we don't need an extra line. Maybe we can do it with a line repeater. However, again, I am always wary of line repeaters. They add telegram traffic onto a line where it's not necessary, but they do sometimes get us out of jail. They're not always a bad thing, but I wouldn't make too much of a habit of using them all the time. And um, we can couple all the K and X lines via IP if we want. So this gives us other options. However, what we've got to be careful of is that the network will broadcast um, multicast telegrams. Um, I've often come across jobs uh, where a network administrator will not let you have multicast telegrams on the network. They don't like them. Um, they're wary of them and it provides a security issue to them. However, there is ways around this and we can get onto VLANs and things like that, but it's important to remember that um, network administrators are usually very wary of multicast telegrams and don't generally tend to like them what that means is that our whole backbone then becomes an, a LAN network we don't need to put in backbone couplers and all that around the network and um, the advantages the huge advantages of this is that we're now um, working over ip and our network can have any length up to ip network lengths I mean, we get we get much more or there's much less limitations on it and um, again though we just have line couplers up and down each area and everything's fine we have a nice we have a nice project layout and there's various different ways to do it as before just remember that we'll have the same number of devices the same topology all the same network issues are, are considered in this we can have line repeaters, we can have single lines, and we can do all sorts of stuff that we need to do. Um, as I said before, couplers are divided into line couplers, backbone couplers, and repeaters. As I said before, we had to give us electrical isolation between the two sides of the device. And that means we also need a power supply on each side of the device, and sometimes people forget that. Um, I've mentioned filter tables. Generally, filter tables are produced by ETS while we're programming the system. If I connect a switch in one line to a relay in another line, um, ETS will automatically add that telegram into the filter table, meaning that when I send the telegram from my switch, it will get through the line coupler and will get to where it needs. Um, here's another example. In this example, you can see we have, um, what have we got? We have a two-fold switch um, on the left-hand side. We have rocker one is connected to telegram 1521, and rocker two is connected to 1256. And because 1256 is also connected to the SAS channel B on the right-hand side over here, 
this telegram is now added automatically to both line couplers yeah and one thing to remember is that when we're programming knx devices sure we will do the device here we'll do the switch we'll do all our parameter settings our connections we'll do all sorts of stuff with this we'll do it with the relay as well the switch actuator and we will do a download to it and what people often forget then is ets will have automatically updated line coupler one filter table and line coupler two filter table and this needs to be downloaded to the device if we don't download it the telegram will not get through our network and will not get to its destination and very important to remember as well is how k and x telegrams are acknowledged in a network if a telegram does not get acknowledged or it receives a not acknowledged signal every device will send the telegram three times it does this three times to make sure that it does not flood the network and just keep uh, sending unanswered telegrams onto a network it's another important thing to remember however we have to see where those acknowledgements come from so if i hit rocker one i'm sending out the telegram onto our network so that telegram goes out onto this line line one and is visible to all devices on the line in this case we've sent 1521 out as a telegram it goes to the dimmer and the dimmer sends an acknowledgement back to the device so the switch now knows that the telegram has been sent the telegram has been acknowledged i do nothing else after that in this case we're sending out 1521 as a group address it goes out to another device as well so now i have two devices that are linked to the same group address they could be two relays controlling two lighting circuits. They could be two dimmers controlling two dimmer circuits. They could be two blinds. They could be any one of a number of things. But both devices that receive the telegram will acknowledge it at the same time. And it's important to remember that acknowledgements are sent at the same time. So as soon as we see one acknowledgement back, the switch will not send this telegram again. If we hit the rocker switch over here, it's the exact same. So rocker switch one over on the right hand side sends 1375. 1375 is acknowledged by the relay. Same thing, it's an inline telegram, there's no problem. But now let's send uh telegram 1256. So the switch, we hit the rocker two on the switch, he sends the telegram out. The acknowledgement comes from the line coupler. The line coupler is the device that sees the telegram and acknowledges the telegram. That line coupler then sends the telegram onto the main line. The main line telegram then is acknowledged by the other line coupler because it's in the filter table. It's in the filter table, so he's going to push it out. He's going to receive it, and he's going to be happy acknowledging it. Line coupler two then sends the group address down onto its line, and it's acknowledged by the relay. Yeah. And that's just a simple way of telegrams are acknowledged throughout the network what's important to remember is that the telegram has to be acknowledged acknowledged at all steps here's another example we send out 1256 1256 is acknowledged again it goes out to the main line again it's acknowledged again line coupler 2 sends it onto line 2 however the device says not acknowledged i don't know maybe the device wasn't ready maybe it was powering up who knows for any one of a number of reasons the telegram mightn't have gotten to the relay so the relay comes back with a not acknowledged something was wrong with that telegram please send it again so what will happen is line coupler 2 will send the telegram none of the other devices will send it it only comes from line coupler 2 line coupler 2 sends it if it's acknowledged the next time that's it everything's finished but as i said he will send it three times maximum yeah it's important to remember he sends three telegrams if they're not acknowledged we don't send it anymore and the relay does not trigger and um, we've got to be careful as well when we're downloading individual addresses to all of our components on our network typically we'll sit with our laptop or our pc programming via a usb interface at the top when we're downloading an address the telegram is a broadcast telegram. It gets through every line coupler on our network. Yeah? However, it's only the device that has the programming button pressed on the front of the device that will accept the telegram. Everybody else just ignores it and just sits there. If a device is in programming mode, the device accepts the address and will accept the new um, telegram from the PC. 
However, this is this is a frequent problem as well and frequently causes issue on site. We're trying to program this device here. Now he's on line two, but for some reason, somebody has left him pressed and it happens all the time. Somebody has left the device in programming mode. I come along and I decide I've got a download address 1.3.7. What happens? This guy is in programming mode. He sees the download telegram, he accepts it, and he'll sit there and say, happy days, I have my new address. A sure sign that something like this has happened is, very often you'll see a telegram, you'll get a message reply um, in ETS telling you, it's along the lines of the device was programmed successfully, however, a reply was not accepted in time. What that's telling me straight away is that this guy is trying to reply back to the computer to say, yes, I've got the address and yes, everything's okay. But it's going through line coupler two and line coupler two sees a telegram for 1.3.7 and he says, that's nothing to do with me. It will not broadcast the telegram through the network, so we get those issues. Again, we just press the programming button and we get the issue there. Um, when we're downloading an application, if possible, it's always quicker to sit in the line that you're programming to. It's not always possible, but it's quicker and it's usually handier. And it causes less of an impact on the rest of the network because we're only downloading in the section that we're in. We're not downloading anywhere else through the network. Um, <clears throat> if we try it from here and we're now programming back up to this switch up here, 108, we have to remember that we're downloading directly to 108. And this is important to remember. This is where I said every device on the network has to have an individual address. We're downloading to it, so that's it. That's the device we talk to. That's the device that's important to us. We download from our USB interface. Telegram goes through the line coupler, programs the switch, and the reply telegrams will come back down that line. And because we're here, because our address is on this line, the line coupler here knows to let the telegrams through. In this case, line coupler two and line coupler three will not allow the telegrams through onto their part of the network because we're programming 108. And they say 108 is not down past me, it's not going past. And similar for line three, it will not program down onto that line. So it's important to remember as well, where you are in the network also has an impact on programming the network. If we're programming 104, now we have an issue. If 104 is on the wrong line, now you can see where the issue is. We're trying to program 104. Our telegram goes onto our line. Line coupler allows it through because it's going onto line 10. However, line coupler 2 and line coupler 3 will block those telegrams. So the program will never get down to here, and we cannot program the device. Uh, this is a common issue I see on sites where switches have been installed on wrong lines. Um, there's all sorts of different reasons for it, but usually it's devices have been installed, presence detectors are in the wrong areas, and uh, switches are in the wrong lines, etc. Um, very often what I've seen people do, which they shouldn't do, what they end up doing, is they'll open all the line couplers. You can tell the line couplers to broadcast all telegram traffic. So people will do it, they'll open all the line couplers, program the device, all the telegrams will get through because the line couplers are open, but then when the project's finished, they forget to reinitialize the filter traffic. And then we have an issue. We have multiple, multiple, in a, in a multi-story building with 10, 15,000 devices, you can get telegram traffic all over the place and it causes havoc. Um, a sure sign, I have, I've seen a lot of issues in telegram or networks that are overloaded. Guys will send temperatures every five seconds on a network, guys have, every device talking to every other device on the network um, and they'll come back to me and they'll tell me oh well we can't the switch doesn't turn on a sure sign your telegram has issues is that one day you come into the office and you hit the light the light comes on perfect next day you come into the office hit the light doesn't work hit it again doesn't work hit it the third time light comes on that's always a sure sign to me that you have too much telegram traffic it's just a problem uh, with your network setup and um, you do not need to broadcast all these telegrams all the time. KNX is an event-driven network. We only need to send a telegram when something happens on the bus. We don't need to constantly cycle and poll and cycle and poll. We don't need it. We just need to send telegrams when an event happens. For instance, when a switch is hit or when somebody walks into a room and triggers a presence detector, 
That's all we need to do with it. We don't need to do any fancy polling or anything like that. Typically, telegrams are on the network for between 20 and 40 milliseconds. A 20 millisecond telegram is switching a light on or something like that. And generally, it's quick, it's fast, and we don't see any problems. Yeah, we can see when we have a program correctly, it all works. So again, we're programming 137. We're programming 137 via line coupler 13. Everything works fine. Um, again, we've no, um, sorry, we have line coupler 4. 137 will not be programmed here because he's hiding behind the wrong line coupler. Yeah, Just something to remember. Um, <clears throat> another example of a, of a, a challenge. This is a challenging issue, this one, because um, we're programming from line one and we're programming device 137. However, we know line coupler one will let the telegrams in and out. But if the, if the device is sitting on the main line, then we get an issue because we can't program it. We can get all the telegrams back and everything seems to work correctly. However, we know it's not in the right place. You know, that can cause issues and sometimes will cause problems. They're just some of the tricks and pitfalls that happen occur from time to time. So here's an example of a project. Um, here's a hotel, say the XXL Tower, classic style, modern style, and royal style apartments with 10 apartments per floor, okay? All in all, there's 30 floors, and we probably have 25 to 30 KNX devices per apartment. So we'll have switches, uh, sorry, switch actuators, dim actuators, fan coils, and sensors. So how do we divide this project up? Well, we got to think, first thing we got to think is that we have a maximum of 64 devices per line. So, oh, okay, let's have a look at that. Typically, we will have two apartments per line. So this is a this is a nice neat way to do it. Two apartments per line gives us a max of sixty devices, which means on each floor then we're going to have a maximum of five lines. So you can see there of apartment one and two are on line one, apartment three and four are on line two, apartment five and six are on line three, seven and eight are on line four, and nine and ten are on line five. So that gives us a nice section. So we can look at this project and we can say, Grand, we can put uh, five lines per floor. So we go up the next floor, we have um, line six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then we go to the next floor with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now we know that there's 15 lines in an area. So we can make the first three floors are now going to be one area. Yeah? It's important to remember 15, 15, 15, 255. Five. So in our structure, we have five lines per floor, which gives us 15 lines per area, which means we have three floors per area. So for example, area one was floor one, floor two, and floor three. Area two was floor four, floor, fly, floor five, and floor six. And area three was 10, uh, sorry, all the way up to area 10, which gave us floor 28, 29, and 30. So you can see how we've mapped the structure through the building and how easy it is to map a structure. It's just picking a structure that works, trying to figure out what works for each individual project, remembering the rules that we have, and then you can just draw any structure you want to be need for this project. Um, now, in another version of this project, we have two apartments per line with five lines per floor. Yeah, so that's just our, sorry, that's just our summary for the whole project. So we have... Um, 25 to 30 devices per apartment, 10 apartments per floor. So we get two apartments per line, five lines per floor, and that gives us three floors as an area, and 30 floors gives us 10 areas. So it works quite nicely. Always important in KNX projects and any large projects like this. Um, my background actually is industrial automation, and the majority of work in industrial automation is documentation. So I'm always a very stickler for documentation. It's very, very, very important to document all these projects correctly. If you go into these big projects, and indeed any projects, if you don't have documentation, you'll be lost. Um, you know, if you go back to work, if you're working on a project now, you're fine. You know your way around the project. You remember where everything is. But you come back to that project in six months. And sure as heck, you're going to be uh, stuck and not remember where everything is through the project. 
here's how we've divided up our areas you can see it's just a standard diagram and it's the same diagram gets used time and time again it's very easy to look at Here's another example of a project. We have um, guest rooms, executive rooms, deluxe rooms, 54 rooms per floor, seven floors, two KNX devices per room. In this case, we've used the ABB Room Master. Now, the ABB Room Master is a handy device. The ABB Room Master is a multifunction device for a room. We have switching, we have relays, we have fan coils, we have all sorts of devices built into the one module. And we've just stuck one temperature display, room temperature controller into the room with this device. So you can see the room master can control all these functions. We can control the blinds, sockets, lights, switches. We can have the fan coil actuator. We have do not disturb makeup room and all those additional features that are required in a hotel room. Here's the wiring for the devices. The devices all will take standard 240 volt devices. They don't need KNX devices for a room like this. We can put standard devices in. We can connect them all up. Once we've connected them up, we just give the electrician this wiring diagram. He should be able to pull everything together. The device comes pre-configured with the KNX project in it. All you really need to do if you're using a standard functionality with this device is give it a device ID on your network. There's nothing else to do with it. It's a very easy, very simple project uh, device. We sell thousands of these devices, particularly into the Middle East, where we do a lot of projects in hotels and things like that. Um, so this project, this hotel then, was just set up as a building and an X. So again, we have 64 devices per line. We have two KNX devices per room. Gave us a maximum of 27 um, rooms per line, leaving a bit of spare capacity. I mean, we've used a maximum of 54 devices, so we have 10 spare devices. It means that we then have two lines per floor, and 14 lines gives us one area. Yeah. So we look at example of floor number five, rooms 5.1 to 5.27 are on line nine, and room uh, 5.28 to 5.57 are on line 10. Just an example of mapping out the building and how best to map out the project. Here's just drawing another version of it, just showing it with a standard line coupler in it. Here's the switchboards as seen in each room. I mean, it's really quite standard stuff. We have one switchboard. There's uh, two KNX devices in the room and a few MCBs, breakers, RCDs, etc. in the room. Uh, it's a simple setup. Um, I've seen these used actually well for student accommodation. Uh, we think of a student um, accommodation in universities. This is pretty standard stuff that they'd use in those rooms. There's nothing out of the ordinary in it. Again, if we want to go over IP, we can put our backbone as Ethernet. And once we have an Ethernet backbone, we don't have to worry about distances up and down corridors and things like that. It makes life a bit handier. And again, if we've used an IP network, we just remember it's just the same network architecture, just using IP instead of a KNX line. Here's typical drawings and typical schematics that we would have for these rooms. Um, it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. Down the bottom, I mean, you can see we have our K and X line down here, K and X line to the next room, K and X line down to the room temperature controller. We have our two volt, 240 volt switches for do not disturb makeup room and all that sort of stuff. We have a key card switch for the room. If we need a key card, you know, we, somebody takes the key card out when they leave the room, that's fine. We have a fan coil actuator off here. We can use all the fan coil if we need it for the room. And then we've power out for sockets and switches and things like that. We also have a window contact if needs be for our fan coil. There's no point in trying to cool a room with the door wide open. Typical architecture drawings for a project like this. And GRMS is the guest room management system. So you can see it's all fed back in this case over IP back to a couple of servers and a few engineering PCs down the bottom. It's really quite a simple, and it's just a matter of getting a bit of experience and just breaking all these projects down. They generally all follow a similar sort of structure. Even the biggest projects in the world can be broken down into a structure like this. Again, just another example of another drawing. We've just got a few more KNX devices in here. It just makes it handy. It just shows what we can do with the rooms. And that's me done for today. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, there's quite a lot of information there. Um, there's a few key points to remember. The key points are the device name being the area line device. Six, uh, it's a 16-bit number with 
um, 448, so it gives us 15.15.255. It's important to remember how many devices we can get onto the KNX line, for example. Uh, up to 64 devices, each device allowed to pull 10 milliamps off the line. And it's just important to remember as well, distances that we need to do, um, things like that. Um, a lot of this will come with experience, but you know it's easy enough. And uh, once you sit down and think about it a couple of times, you'll make a few mistakes. But once you learn from those mistakes, everything will be okay. And um, all our projects will be successful. Okay, thanks a million, guys. Thank you, Ian. That was uh, a really great uh, presentation. There's, there's an awful lot to digest in that jersey, and um, it's, it's usually something, I mean, if we're doing training, you know, we, we do this over a number of hours, but there, there's a lot of information in that presentation, and but it's, it's the basics, and once you get this right, and uh, you have your network architecture figured out, it saves you a lot of heartache and problems in the long run, and once you have a properly designed project, and this comes with experience over time, but once you have a properly designed project, um, really your life becomes much simpler, and if you work with uh, good installers who are doing the electrical side of the work, certainly once these guys become used to installing KNX product, they'll do a very quick, very easy job. And that will mean as integrators, we just go to site to program it. Everything's fine, the architecture's fine, the structure is fine, but it's important that it's done properly from the start because the amount of errors you can gobble up by trying to find these problems will um, hurt you. <laughs> I think I think this is this is always true with uh, the the proper engineering process. The amount of time you spend on the early stage of the process um, this, uh, to define requirements to start with and to properly design is definitely very, very well spent time. You will have much better product, much better outcome of the every engineering process. So it's definitely true also for uh, designing KNX. Well, first thing you're going to look at is how many devices you have in your network. Um, how big is my building? How many devices have I got in my network? How many devices am I installing? Um, there's a lot of different variables in here. Um, if I'm doing a house, general, generally I'm probably going to have two lines in a house, something like that. So generally I'll try put maybe one on the ground floor, or one on the first floor, or something like that. Um, if I'm doing an office block or a big office layout, and um, depending on the number of devices, we'll have a look at the structure of the building, where are the switchboards and things like that. And generally, you'll quickly see where does it make sense. I mean, if I have, I had, here's a good project I did a few years back. Um, it was a large open plan office. And the guys phoned me up and they told me they'd used two drums of cable so far and they were putting in the third drum on the one line. Now, I know that the drums of cable come in 500 meter lengths. So these guys are up to 1,500 meters on the first line. So I went to site to help them. I went to have a look. And what I found they were doing was um, the presence detectors. This, this office is, I don't know, maybe it was 50, 60 meters long. And they were going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down the office with the cabling. And I said, guys, you've got to stop this. Luckily for them, the switchboards were in the middle of this office layout. So they just broke each side and pulled them straight back into the switchboards. And immediately from having a cable length of over 1,500 meters, they halved it straight away. So they were well within um, distance regulations. And everything was fine after that. Everything works fine. But it's just a bit of experience. It's just to have a look at the layout of the building. Where are we in relation to switchboards? How far are things away? If we're in an office, can we just use one line on a floor? Can we use two lines on a floor? Um, how it makes sense. We just, we just pick this up over time as, to, as we look at the layout of the projects. So to remind, next week we'll be talking about KNX programming using ETS tool. Um, 2 p.m. Wednesday, 29th of April. And the following uh, Wednesday at, on 6th of May, 3 p.m. rather than 2 p.m. This is one hour later. Ian will be uh, presenting KNX and DALI lighting control. That's also an interesting uh, topic. Quite a lot of uh, installers were using DALI lights, particularly in the commercial area. So yeah. that will be very, very beneficial to listen to. Thank you, Ian, for your time today. And okay. um, talk to you and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye.